I'm excited. I have a very good word. Um, very interesting word that I've been waiting for. So something that I've been picking up in the spirit for many months and um, something the Holy Spirit kind of showing me and giving me this week that I started making more and more sense. Um, I'm going to step out in faith when it comes to this word and I'm just going to trust God that um, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. When you follow his voice, he really does. So we are in a very interesting, as a church, um, we are in a very interesting place um, nationally, globally. Um, as far as how I mean that, when it comes to different movements, right? There was a Pentecostal movement. There is a charismatic movement. And it's like when it comes to these movements, they kind of, they came to a halt, right? So God really wants to manifest something new on this earth and we're just following him one day at a time but what i really felt like you know today what holy spirit put on my heart is that when it comes to receiving something new you have to let go of the old how many of you guys know that it's like when you're holding on to something you can't receive something new because your hands are already busy right spiritually speaking it's it's the same it's the same principle um when it comes to seeing change in life or seeing something happen you have to be expecting you have to be hungry and you have to be desperate if you're not hungry for change if you're not expecting something most likely change is not going to come and i know that in so many different areas of my life finances personal change spiritually when you get desperate when you start hungering for something more when you get sick and tired of your comfort and where you're at crazy change starts coming into your life it's like you are open for god to to take you into new places so i kind of wanted to start with that because I want to build hunger and expectation when it comes to this season where body of Christ is at where we are at um, let's cry together it's not a matter of getting used to every single right Sunday or, or where we've been at all of that is literally yesterday God is in the now and what he's doing in the now we have to follow his voice and see where he takes us right we don't know until we start seeing more clearly one step at a time so this being said one of the things that god showed to me or he he gave me this week was um a vision of john paul jackson that uh well actually a letter letter that uh john paul jackson gave to um rt kendall this was in 2001 so john paul jackson had this vision in 19 86 so this is a long time i wasn't even here right god already gave him this vision that he saw and so he shares this with uh rt kendall how many of you guys john paul john paul jackson he's not on this earth no more but he was a prophet of god and he was um a very high statured man of, of god i mean he, he did his life right and he is definitely one of the people that you listen to and you look up to and you learn from, right? Because God did a lot of stuff from him and the stuff that he released happened and a bunch of stuff that he hasn't, like things that he released haven't happened yet. So that being said, I really, um, I want to get into this letter right now and read, read this letter that he gave to uh, R.T. Kendall. R.T. Kendall is another man of God. He's in his 90s. He's still alive. He served God for literally all of his life. Um, man that's been connected to all these big names as well. So let's, let me read this letter. This is the vision, again, that John Paul had in 1986, November. At that time, uh, John Paul was 36 years old. It's, um, this is kind of intense because God's been speaking through this in small pieces throughout time frame, right? And we're kind of like, we're at that time where God is manifesting and releasing this. So, I was in a large room. This is John Paul saying, I was in a large room in heaven much like a temple setting it was pure white in color everything was white to the left were tall double doors 
each about 20 feet tall, totaling in 20 feet width. So the total opening was 20 by 20. So 20 by 20 feet, pretty big. To my right were four rows in white stone, like bleachers or rows of seats. So kind of like seating. I heard the doors open and watched a line of men begin to walk into the room, crossing in front of me towards the four rows of white stone. The first men who walked by were all well known and some were internationally known. So pretty much these were leaders, either national, small time or bigger time. Um, however, not all well known preachers were there. But all who were there in front of the line were, were. Okay, this is, his language is a little bit different here. I did not know the men who came later in the line. The line was led by a well-known pastor who led the men and filled the third row. So pretty much it started with third, first, and, and second row. The, as the, these people were walking in, they were filling these rows next to the highest row so fourth row was considered the highest row once that road was row was filled the men begin to fill the second row and then the first all those who stood stood as if standing for something to happen so they were expecting they were hungry the men in the third row were so proud to be there standing above the others that's pride there was one well-known pastor evangelist on the third row who was he doesn't mention or disclose any names in this uh vision which is good third row who was to the left of the center was juggling to take the center position so he wanted attention i was wondering why no one was standing on the top the fourth row which was empty so literally third first and second rows were completely filled with these uh leaders these pastors a tall fairy white haired messenger with pierced green blue eyes came walked in and he suddenly appeared on the high podium so stage as he was translated there as he was trying so as he whatever that looks like he got on the platform um, it was the highest thing in the room and the fairy messenger stood looking down at the rows of man he opened the bible and said with a commanding voice gentlemen i have a word for you and the body of christ from the throne room of god concerning the next generation no concerning the next great move of god on earth the key to this move of god is found in the bible in the book of romans and in particular Romans chapter 4 he said this word is contained within the whole of the scripture but it is unseen truth it's like it's there but people don't have the eyes to see it the key is unseen due to the current doctrines of the church this truth is so hard to embrace and contain that it is not even considered by most he went on to say this truth will mark the church in the coming move of God and it will separate and distinguish the coming church from the present church. He then began to unveil the truth for what seemed to be a long period of time but I did not remember what he said about those things. As I returned, I was removed oh it was removed from my memory this is very unique what john paul says so when he saw this vision he doesn't fully remember all the details of what it looked like but as i was not the one to proclaim the fullness of it it's like god showed me the steps of it but not the details were revealed to him as if to give the church direction but he wasn't going to be a part of this move and everything that's taking place this is coming from john paul the messenger then looked around and said so the guy on the stage looked around and said once again this message is for the from the throne room of god concerning the great the next great move of god on the earth the secret to the move of god is found in the book of romans 
and Romans chapter 4 in particular. But you men on the third row have already violated chapter 4, the chapter four, 4 principles. None of the ministers will grow, many will languish, and some of you will die without fulfilling your purpose. However, you men on the second row and first row, you will not violate chapter 4 principles. In a day you think not. So God is giving them grace. In a day you think at the very least anyways again verbal is a little bit in some areas uh, hard over here the Lord will suddenly calip catapult you over those who currently Lord over ministries so he will pretty much accelerate in other words he will accelerate you to the fourth row where no one has stood since the early church so by early church it talks about the book of Acts how how church was established the man on the third row began to protest and argue with the messenger but he would not argue with them it was as if what was said was said so pretty much it was a yes and amen and you can't argue with him um, this was the end of the vision so again I'm taking this by faith but in my spirit I really feel intensely what is happening or where God has taken the church and taken us all together all the details I do not know what it looks like but God is giving us clear instruction if you guys know the book of uh, Romans it is a powerful book and even like I was as I was thinking about Romans for prepping for all of this it's as I was feeling, it, God has taken us to the beginning, right? To the basics of Christianity and, and what we as Christians, we need to stand on. So Romans chapter 4, I just kind of want to recap what this, uh, what this chapter is about. Pretty much this chapter is about faith over works, right? In achieving righteousness believe in the promise of God regardless of the visible circumstances it is in this faith that you are credited righteousness follow in the footsteps of Abraham for like when it comes to Paul he talks a lot about Abraham and, and giving him an example in chapter 4 so firmly trusting in the power of God so pretty much it is very simple I feel like a lot of people kind of know this but your salvation is not done by works it is strictly by faith so when God releases promises over you he wants you to hold on to them like Abraham did right Abraham I don't want to jump ahead but uh, Abraham believed no matter what he believed till the end of this day you know even when God came with the promise Abraham was already laughing I'm like really I'm gonna have a kid at 99 like that tells me that God will push push like he will stretch you right when you're standing on his promises being obedient he will stretch you so when it comes to uh, back to chapter uh, 4 Romans righteousness through faith was credited to Abraham before he was circumcised so before the covenant happened with him and God providing that righteousness is not tied to the law this is uh, Paul explaining verses 9 through 12 in chapter 4 this makes Abraham the father of all who believe and have faith and it talks about whether you're Jew or Gentile or whatever it goes back to faith and standing on this faith not gaining your your salvation and and with God but only by faith right so whatever God promised you you're trusting him you're believing and you're walking out you're not basing it because of what you do but strictly again going back to uh, Abraham and he believed when he looked at the stars he believed what God promised him and he hold on to that no matter what in verses 13 through 25 in Romans 4 it talks about uh, offspring so like this chapter has two segments to it believing two parts to it believing God with faith and standing on that faith no matter what and then receiving the inheritance that has been promised to uh, Abraham right 
Abraham was promised an, an offspring, an inheritance. He was promised an off, offspring to inherit the world. So literally, like all of those stars that he saw were, were some of those stars. <laughs> literally, we are some of those stars that, that uh, were promised to Abraham. So when it comes to this, this is a very huge topic to get into as far as the book of Romans chapter 4. I really like, I wanted to kind of jump into this, the, the, the vision that John Paul had, kind of go over a little bit of chapter 4. It talks about justification, right? Justification is, is trusted to us to keep our life pure, to walk in, in righteousness, to, to really try our best as Christians to be on the right path, right? Salvation is gifted by Holy Spirit. When it comes to uh, sanctification is our responsibility. Our responsibility to learn, to walk in integrity, godliness, righteousness, purity, all of the standards of, of heaven. Um, by that, honoring God. So Abraham, the interesting thing about Abraham, Abraham was very blessed physically and he was blessed spiritually with inheritance, right? So there's two parts to Abraham. His, his whole life. So let me maybe take a step back. A lot of people, they know the Bible. But a lot of things that I encounter when I talk to people, they, they don't walk in faith. They just go with the flow of life, right? Whatever is coming at them, they're like more on the traditional side. They don't live in the now and in the moment being like sensitive to Holy Spirit and following His voice. So the thing that I want to highlight from, from Abraham is really like he was in a moment, he lived in faith, like he believed with all of his heart, God's promised, and he walked that out. When it comes to our hearts, is um, I had a sermon a little bit earlier. Our hearts, whatever, whatever we have in our hearts, that's the kind of uh, fruit we're going to get from life, right? So whatever is hidden, that's what's going to be exposed and that's what's going to be put on top. So when it comes to this season and this place that God is taking us right now, God wants us to walk with Him in faith, being hungry, expecting, and being sensitive to what He's doing because when it comes to the world, society, culture, like it is getting dark out there and it is getting rough in some sp spots where people get attacked left and right, not even knowing what's happening. God is, he's really removing the gray and he's, he's, he's bringing his church into the light. He wants his kid to live in the light. Either you're for it or you're not. So that being said, when if you guys know the concept, I think Andre had a sermon uh, a few weeks back when it comes to the light and darkness. When light penetrates or hit, hits, uh, the light hits the darkness, there is always going to be uncomfort happening, right? If you guys ever experienced that, like at work, all of a sudden people start manifesting and hating on you and cussing you out and you don't know what happened. That's called light that is in you and Jesus and Holy Spirit that's on you come into the darkness. The people themselves, they don't even know what's happening. I like nowadays I hear this countless and count, countless and countless of times that families that are not with God, all of a sudden you're their enemy for no reason. And people don't know why they hate you. Same with like with work. Like you, I had a client as I, I believe I mentioned this few weeks back, I had an issue at work person is manifesting after their emotions come down and everything they just felt horrible they didn't know what was happening they just started literally manifesting without without reason without any logical explanation so there is more and more of that stuff happening and god is god is building us god is building us to be strong as christians to stand our position as children of light and he doesn't want us to back away for whatever whatever it looks like whatever the circumstance I, this is literally this is the time that we're in right now so when it comes to living a life of faith it's not emotional it's not what kind of day you had a good day or a bad day right it's you're living in faith this is who you god is and this and you are a child of god 
So this is this is your foundation. I feel like we covered this. Andre's been hammering on this for months, uh, months and months. What it looks like to be his kid. I really feel like when it comes to this prophetic word that was released by John Paul, because throughout history, a lot of big name people, they've been saying the same thing and same thing about this uh, new wave and this new uh, pouring out of God's glory or whatever, whatever you want to call it, that you can call it in different names. All of them been saying the same thing. And it's pretty much what that means is that God is going to be pouring out you know how the Bible talks about the best wine is saved for last? So that's really what God is doing. He's preparing us as children to be his hosts of glory and power. Because in the first church, when Paul walked the streets, he said like, what's, what's the worst? What's the word? I believe it's in, yeah. First Thessalonians 1 through 5. Paul said, not only by word that I bring uh, the demonstration of kingdom, but I also brought it by power. Where church, is right, where church is at right now, we're not in a good place. Let's put it like that. Something has to change and church has to go back to the days of Acts to carry the power and authority that they walked in in order to truly demonstrate Jesus and demonstrate the kingdom of heaven, what it looks like. But in order for that to happen, Jesus got to prepare his vessels. Sons and daughters, that are able to withstand his presence and his glory. It looks individually and corporately. So really when it comes to Abraham, he was... He was a father. He was literally, a, he is our father of faith, right? So when it comes to him, because of him, and we believe in the same God, and we stand, stand on the same position of him, that means we have the inheritance that is on his life. The inheritance, how many of you guys have ever thought about inheritance or what it looks like? I'm just, okay. Not a lot, because actually few people, like a lot of people that I talk to, very few people understand what inheritance is. Um, maybe I'll go into it some other day, but inheritance is pretty much a family, right? It gets passed down from a blood, like from a bloodline, wealth or wisdom or whatever, it gets passed down to you. So spiritually, being and following the bloodline, we have inheritance in Jesus and we have inheritance like in in Adam, in uh, Abraham this uh, inheritance is literally I want so the example okay the example is this Abraham he receives his promise from God he's 80 years old he's 80 years old is when God tells him that he's gonna have uh, a kid and through that kid he's gonna uh, receive the blessing right so Abraham takes that promise he holds it in his heart for 19 years until he was 99 nothing was happening and in that time he actually tried doing it on his own um, his wife set him up <laughs> to have an Ishmael <laughs> that was um, a little carnal baby right there but nevertheless you know the promise and God's will still stands at 99 God comes to him and he says that you're gonna be pregnant he doesn't he doesn't he was like him and, and his wife left he was like really how can we even be bearing at this age it's unreal but nevertheless he gets they get a baby right they get a baby and God's promise is hidden in that seed what I want to say by all of this is that when God gives you a promise, taking my life for example, when it comes to inheritance, inheritance is only manifested through persistent faith and obedience to Him. So when you're a baby in, in Jesus, you need somebody. You need somebody to lead you, to guide you, to help you, right? But then as you keep on getting stronger and smarter and, and, and you can st stand on your own feet, you have your own God and you have your own faith to believe in. The faith that I'm talking about that should be in your heart is the promise of God that is, that is promised through Bible and to you personally, whatever God's promise has been released into your life. So hold on to that. 
persistent and obedience. And that takes time. For Adam, that took nine, uh, Adam, for Abraham, that took 20 years. It took 20 years for him to step into that true inheritance that God has prepared for him. It looks, you know, it looks very simple, uh, you know, taking it practically day in and day out. It, took, it looks very simple. I go by the principle of being faithful with the little thing that God gave you. So your little thing is always going to be multiplying to a bigger thing. But when God gives you a family and kids, you take care of them. You pour into them. Whatever your portion is in the moment, you pour into that. But when you are faithful with the little that God has given you, do that to the best of your ability as you are doing it into God. That's, what's, that's what, you know, the Bible talks about. When you walk under God, either working for a boss, you do your best work, serving, loving on your kids, raising them up as solid men and women on God. Or if you're a businessman, truly just trying your best to manifest kingdom, culture, and economy, the inheritance is in your faith with God and inheritance is in you living your life before God and in front of God, doing and living your whole life. That's how in, like inheritance is manifested through God, in your life by God. So what that means is that everybody is promised something. For everybody, it looks different. By you being faithful, and obedient you're gonna see that not only physical blessing but also spiritual blessing Ephesians 1 11 I want to read this because we are united with Christ we have received an inheritance from God and for he for he chose us in advance and he makes everything work out according to his plan so being in the season corporately and being in the season you know individually God has a plan for all of it he has a plan for church and he has a plan for you individually in order to step into the inheritance because I feel like people are not going to be able to do life outside of God's presence and his supernatural hand right now literally live your life and even corporately serving and moving forward you're gonna have to completely get united and connected to the vine and to Jesus A lot of people, what I noticed, this is a sad kind of story. A lot of people don't step into their full inheritance in Jesus and don't step into the full purpose and blessing of God because they give up too early. They abandon their positions and sons and daughters and they kind of abort the growth and the process that God puts you in. The process is tough. God is going to like squeeze you and and test you and try you until your heart is pure and completely yielded to him and and is completely surrendered to him and most people for them it's uncomfortable and they give up and that is a very sad part because when i look at my life stepping into the inheritance like literally recently i, st I started noticing then more and more that i started stepping into inheritance that god has prepped for me and this is done completely by his grace and his mercy um and that being said it's it's an honor but it's also it costs me something throughout the years to completely surrender my life to him and completely be obedient to him and in and, and everything that you know every trial tribulation all the hardships that i went through it you know i had to be yielded to him obedient to him and just follow his voice no matter what So when it comes to today, quite a bit of people, again, are, express, are experiencing pressures, opposition. Slowly persecution is starting to come towards Christianity and a lot of hardships. 
I, I want to encourage everybody. You guys, when it comes to light and darkness, it is going to collide. It might look ugly. But God wants to build endurance in you. He wants to make you stronger. He wants to make you smarter. He wants to make you more pure. Don't run away from it. Face it and go towards it. If you can't, ask for his help. Ask for his mercy and his grace. When it comes to all of these things that I just said, pressures, persecutions, hardships, oppositions, it is an indicator. Looking at my life, all of it has been indicator that my intimacy with God has been in the right place and God has been taking me deeper and deeper into his intimacy. What God is doing right now is really working on our hearts, working on us as a body to pour in his, his power and authority. Literally, that's, that's what I keep on seeing and feeling. Up to us is learning to walk in faithfulness, holiness, righteousness, integrity. And things that will keep us sane and keep us safety when God's presence and glory starts coming in. There's a lot of compromise, lukewarmness, and false doctrine that I really feel like it's going to be falling off of church. It's a matter of time the Holy Spirit will come and start. As he's doing it right now, as he's cutting off all the gray area, and as we're starting to walk more in light, and you can see that light and darkness more vividly, literally in every area of life right now. What that means is that God is releasing his truth right now over church, over us, and he's purifying us. So we're not diluted with anything, but we're completely yielded to him in unison and oneness um, with Jesus. Without God in this season, it's unreal. So when it comes to Jesus' word, he said, one of the things when I was analyzing, when it comes to Jesus and walking on this earth, everything he said took shape and manifested, right? So his word carried power and authority. In order for us to walk in the same power and authority, we got to be yielded to him as vessels. We got to walk his, his ways and we got to speak this, this, his truth and we really got to be on the same page. So let's close our eyes right now. I want to I wanna pray for us. Holy Spirit, I just ask that whatever, whatever you're doing with the body of Christ right now, whatever you're doing with us individually right now, I just ask that we come in a full alignment with you. I ask that you purify our hearts. I ask that you strengthen us. I ask that your mercy, your grace, your wisdom leads us and guide us in everything that we do in every area of our life, Lord. Thank you so much that when we don't know, when we don't see clearly, we can trust you because you got us. And you know what you are preparing us as a house for the next steps. You know exactly what you have prepped for this place. We don't fully know or understand. But we just open up our hearts in hunger and thirst in expectation. And we say yes to you, Holy Spirit. We say yes to the new beginnings. We say yes to your presence and your spirit. And we say yes to this new move that you're going to be releasing over your body. We just ask that you find us worthy to truly be able to withstand what you're going to be pouring out. In Jesus' name, amen.